Welcome back. This week we are celebrating 70 years of 12 News. It's hard to believe. And we've been looking back all week at our history and honoring some of the great people who made 12 News what it is today. Yeah, we've had some really special guests in all week, and we have some more special guests joining us at 6 o'clock tonight. Tonight we're joined by Lou Ruggiero and Rich Robertson, and it is honestly, it's such a pleasure to have both of you guys in here. Um, let me just say off the top that both of you guys were really inspirational for me as a reporter because you both did it the right way. Thorough, fair, from A to Z, 100%. And you've both transitioned into what seems to be, basically in our conversation before we came on the air, a, a pretty natural progression, which is private investigators. It is, yeah. We, we do uh, all kinds of investigations now, and, and it's the same kind of work. We're using the same skills that we always had as journalists. We gather facts and we tell stories. And I'll ask each of you, um, during your time here at 12 News working as uh, investigators, what were some of the stories that stood out to you the most? Well, obviously there were the, the very large stories like the Phelps Dodge Copper strike in 83, the Mecham impeachment in the mid 80s, as scam at the legislature, the Symington fraud trial, uh, the Amtrak Sunset, on, uh, Sunset Limited, uh, all of those, the uh, Oklahoma City bombing and the Tide of Kingman. All of those stand out. But I want to correct one thing Rich said. I mean, yes, I'm an investigator, mm -hmm. but always Rich was the I team. I was general assignment. I was the B team. Oh, you know, I was, no, 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 but no, no. Come no. On. I was the guy, I was <laughs> the guy who, uh. who, who, you know, went out there every day. Rich, you know, Rich well. had... Uh, but with the same lose goal. The back <laughs> well, yeah. yes, but, but, with the same but goal. see, after you do this long enough, you start to learn from people like Rich and you start to, you, you see things and you go, wait a minute. And then you start following up on that and it ends up looking like I'm an investigator when in fact I'm a general assignment reporter. I'll do whatever comes down the road. And Lou, one of the things that I, I, I had mentioned that I, I respect both of you so much, and one of the things that I loved about your reporting, Lou, is that you were never afraid to get down in the muck to tell the story the right way including the time when Phoenix PD first got stun guns on the force. I want to roll a little piece of tape. Take a look at the monitor, Lou. DeGreen recently produced an informational tape about stun guns. There are three basic claims about what it does to attackers. The subject experiences instant disorientation, loss of balance, and is rendered dazed and passive. To check out claims about the stun gun stopping power, Sergeant Darwin Berry of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office agreed to a field test. However, I don't find myself particularly stunned or dazed. After that, the I element of surprise was gone. Several states outlaw these stun guns altogether and a few restrict them only to police agencies. The Phoenix Police Department considered using these a couple of years ago, but decided against it because they weren't reliable enough. But other Valley law enforcement agencies, including the Sheriff's Office, do use them. You know, it was after that, Lou, that Phoenix PD decided not to use the stun guns. Well, now, now my wife has one. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a typical day at the office. <laughs> he didn't expect you to fight back. No, and that, but the point was, is that we were trying to show that it didn't just instantly disable you, yeah. that a person that wanted to f fight back had a chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we weren't, it wasn't life and death at that point, yeah. nor was I facing a felony arrest. But, you know, it doesn't just <laughs> yeah. instantly... Just, yeah, it, yeah. It's not... It's not the silver bullet just by touching it. Although, when she tried to stun me the other night, <laughs> it did disable me. It's because I have the, the newest modern the new version. version. Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. the modern version. That was the, old, that was the old hand taser. <laughs> yeah. Now they have the, the taser guns with the, yeah. right, the uh, p probes that come in and... Uh, Rich, yeah. you said something really interesting to me. You said that once you moved out of doing investigations for TV and you moved into the PI world, you said the things that you learned, you said you wish you had known because you would have been a better reporter. Yeah, it's, there's so much nuance in the criminal justice system that you know, I was not aware of even after all the years of covering the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. and, and to understand more about how it works behind the scenes, uh, you know, we are involved in it behind the scenes now. We have direct contact with our clients and, and to understand them as people not just as suspects or not them as demonized on 
the news, unfortunately. Uh, so we get to know them better. And, and I think it gives us a, a different perspective and that I wish I had known. Right. And I, I think I would have been a better Which, which do you guys find more fulfilling, when you, when you solve a case as a PI or when you turned a great story? <laughs> well, you know, what I liked about journalism was that we could take a, a systemic view of what's going on. So you, you take that 30,000 foot view and now we're down working with a person. And, and it's a life and death sometimes because we work on death penalty cases uh, and for that individual person. So it's, it's different in that sense. And, and both of them, I think, are very important. So I think it's really important for, to, for news to do what it does and for us to do what we do. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like I can, I can tell you, I have investigated for years a major case from 1994, the armored car robbery out at... Uh, I remember at, at the movie theater. Uh, it was Dillard's out at the Arrowhead Mall. Okay. At, okay, at Bell Road, basically, in what's now the 101, uh, that, that uh, ended up with the arrest of uh, three people. And of course, as, as a journalist, I covered that, but you're, you're kind of, you're hitting here, you're hitting there. But for, in four and a half years, I got to know that case intimately. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it happened quite the way the uh, police thought it happened. And that's a public record now, but I don't want to get into all the details. But I mean, who did it? I don't know, but how it happened. Yeah. Where, were you, where were you the night of March 4th, 19? 93. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are working, um, or you have done some work on a very big case that's happening right now, the Lori Vallow Davis right, case. Right. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so we got hired as private investigators to uh, try to find the kids. Uh, the grandparents uh, hired us when the kids were missing. And so well before law enforcement was involved and everything, uh, so we started trying to find all the people and tr uh, that were involved in that and try to find the kids. And it was the result of that information that we notified law enforcement that there was going to there was some kind of a problem, and so uh, that's what led to all of the charges and stuff. But we were in the very early stages of that case and have been obviously following it ever since. Well, guys, um, so many years of of great reporting for 12 News, and we are better off for it for having you both as part of our reporting staff. And it is it has been we talked about it last night. The yeah. best part of this week celebrating 70 years is seeing and reconnecting with with all of these people who you admire and cared for during the years that you worked together. So well, thank don't you be too easily amused, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, you know, I've set the bar pretty low, as we all have to do well, in this business. There I am. <laughs> no, thank you both. It's, thank it's, you. it's thank a you pleasure both. to thank see you, you both. Yes, of course. Thanks, guys.